So why do we do it? What good is it? Does it teach us anything like determination, invention, improvisation, foresight, hindsight, love, strength or patience or accuracy, or quickness or tolerance, or which wood will burn, and how long a day is and how far a mile, and how delicious is water, and how to rely on yourself. So why do we do it? What good is it? Does it teach us anything? I think we love canoeing for so many reasons. Because it gives you a sense of purpose constantly. Your goal is just to move forwards. And so even it's a small goal, but you accomplish it constantly. And so you have this incredible sense of self-worth when you're canoeing. Because your goal was to get from point A to point B, and you did that. And maybe you didn't. The thing was you tried so hard. And maybe what stopped you was like something was beyond your means, but you gave it your all. And I think that's another thing, is that the beauty of canoeing is that you travel at a pace that you don't control. There are storms, there's weather, there's heat, there's portages you thought were there, there's the river itself, and all you can do is kind of head out with your boats and your gear and your trip and try and do a route that you drew on a paper, but then once you get out there it's totally out of your control what happens. So it's like a nice way to step outside of things that are so planned and structured and like happen as they're supposed to. You get on the this and get on the river, it's who knows what's gonna happen for the next few weeks. Stephen's trips are, are kind of about getting away from distractions. I think that people are so surrounded by all kinds of social media now that we've become so accustomed to it that we don't even really notice anymore. So it's just important to take a step back. I think it's just more to get us away from putting all our attention in the technology and kind of letting us just focus on nature and the world around us. It's nice, yes. Since our society is so bent on having a phone now and then when you're out here everything seems to go away and just like forget about that for six weeks. I came into Stevens not knowing much of the tradition. Um, came into the depot not knowing where anything is and just to find out that like there's a way of doing things every and it's hard to kind of implement new things because we're scared of change I think it is cool like with the trail program because it's so generationally connected like my family's connected Andre's is as well I'm not sure about Scott um, is that you hear their stories and then you can Totally relate. We name our canoes to the point that somebody else from another six we can come back and say we use that, we use that. And they're just familiar with all the same stuff and we know it works. And if it doesn't work, we repair it till we know it works. This is the <laughs> biggest sunrise ceremony uh, I've ever seen. Maybe that's ever happened ever. This is insane. It's a really unique situation that you don't really get elsewhere because you're literally with the same nine or ten people or eight or nine people for six weeks straight. Me, Stevens at its core is, is a wilderness camp. It's a wilderness tripping camp. This program and this depot and everything, all the staff here, 
just embody that entirely. It's definitely like an opportunity that not many people get. Like, personally, my friends in the city find it bizarre that you would go into the bush for six weeks. The stories, the stories of adversity are the ones that are fun to tell. Stories of serious trials, grave misfortunes, and the things that you do to deal with those as they come up are the ones that are the most fun to look back on and talk about. I decided to start waving at them and promptly let go of my paddle, which fell into the set. I was in the bow, and as the canoe started to tip over as we entered this hole, I grabbed both of the gunnels and started to tip the canoe over as I was so unbalanced. And as the canoe almost tipped over, Steve, who couldn't do a brace because he was too close to rock on one side of him, grabbed the gunnel on one side and pushed the boat down to flatten it out, then grabbed my paddle out of the water, picked it up and threw it back to me. When you first asked me what one of my favorite trail memories was, um, the first ones that come to mind are some crazy paddling stories, like paddling on Lake Winnipeg at night or, or some of our, our bigger whitewater sets. But now that I think about it a bit more, uh, one of the most important moments I think I've ever had on trail happened when I was 15 on my second two-week trip. It was a two-week advance, and we did South Vermilion. And I have no idea, I was 15 years old, I have no idea where we actually were on the route, but at one point we were on a beach, and um, there was the whole trip, our trippers, and we stayed up pretty late at night, just sitting on the beach, and uh, I didn't talk much on that trip. I was pretty quiet guy, but I remember our tripper telling stories to us about uh, his youth and his childhood and all the trouble that he got into and the shenanigans he got up to. It was the most um, honest I'd ever heard someone older than me speak to me. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just really hit home and kind of changed the game for me uh, in terms of who a tripper could be and, and what kind of role they could play. I kind of just uh, stared at the fire for like three hours once no one else was around me. Oh. Just stayed outside and looked at the fire. It was just, I don't know, it was just so quiet. You couldn't, I think it was just you. It felt like you were just alone with your thoughts and your feelings. Like, it was good. I'd redo that any day. The, the whole, the whole uh, land around there just changed dramatically and we were in polar bear territory, which was also pretty cool. And, uh, I don't know, it, just, it was just a real, uh, it was just a real awakening moment to really just to to I mean obviously the the majesty of the of the Hudson Bay and uh, and actually getting there um, as a, having the the accomplishment of making it there because we knew from the setup that was our that was our ultimate goal uh, was really was really something to experience and it's definitely something that I'll never forget and it's probably uh, one of the great defining moments of my life. Uh, and then she just turned around and she was paddling for a bit more. And I guess I said we were about to hit home. And this girl turned around and said to me, like, can we just, can we just turn around and go back? Like, I don't want to go home. Let's stay here forever. Said, exactly. That's, that's what I've been trying to, that's what I want to foster, is like a, a sense of home out there. I guess it's the closest I've ever come to parenting. 
and that pride, I get it, it's pride that you feel when they come back the next year and they're stronger, faster, more mature. I think it's another instance where the silence is just really, really powerful. No one's, no one's talking, not even, not even in the canoes. You're just uh, paddling in formation and in perfect silence. You're, that's your last moment to think about what the trip has, has meant to you, what it's changed, how, how it's impacted you. That moment when you, you paddle around chiefs and you do your ceremony in the bay, and you look at campus and all your friends and all your family that you've known for years, maybe. Like your, your counselors, your trippers, they're all sitting there and they're all like, welcoming you back. I feel this intense sense of value, like what I do uh, is a value to other people and, and like part of that is tripping, I just love tripping, but when you walk up from a trip, you're walking across campus and the people that matter the most to you are clapping and are proud of you because of having done this thing, it's just this, it's this wonderful feeling of, I guess, of belonging, of being of value. I think it's, uh, it's tough though. There's so many funny moments that happen on trail. There's so many funny things. And it's, I think it can be tough to, to communicate exactly why so many of those were funny. But if you uh, find a really good one, you have, you have a return ceremony that someone enjoys, that's, that's something. I, I mean, I think, I think that must have been what, part of what made me want to go on trail as a kid. Like, seeing hilarious return ceremonies, hearing about adventures, uh, you know, people running out of food, people having encounters with bears and wildlife, like, it's, you just hear the highlights, and the highlights are so high and so ridiculous, and it's something that you uh, want to go after as well, I think. To those who have struggled with it, the wilderness reveals beauties that will not disclose to those who have made no effort. The wilderness reserves its choicest gifts for those who undertake its challenges. Trips in the Lake the last moment when it's when it's just you and just the guys who have who have completed something and I remember after my six week my my tripper asked uh, asked us before we went back up on tour like are, are you ready for this this is just like take take one more moment if you need it to just steal yourself for what for what comes next for re re-entering uh, the world It's, I don't know, it's just a simpler way of being, and I think it's in that simple way of being that we find that it's maybe easiest to distill uh, <laughs> just how to live, how to, how, to, how to exist, how to get by, how to survive. That's what that trail program has meant to me.